Why can't we have good old Australian grey food? And it's nice to see you too, Grumbled Pop. Yeah. Well, how was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. Someone should blow bicycle couriers up. Oh, God, what's happened now? Everything. Why is it when something rotten's going to happen, it always happens to me? I've been thinking about this, and it suddenly occurred to me that you're a sort of global voodoo doll that the whole world sticks pins into. Yeah, that'll be right. Let's have some fun. Let's stick pins in Ted. Oh, they all did it. The doctor, the hospital, the Red Cross, the vet. The vet? Well, he said it was an accident, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't as though I was holding a sick animal or anything like that. I was out outside his window when he said he was aiming at a dartboard. <laughs> There you go. My theory is proved. You are the universal crash test dummy. Now, where was I? You were blowing up bicycle couriers. Well, you can add speed humps to that. And going down to the bank with Jono was a nightmare torture track. Bumping over speed humps. Room, room, clonk, clonk. Room, room, clonk, clonk. Room, room, clonk, clonk. <laughs> what was that? That was a bloody roundabout. <laughs> it wasn't there yesterday. They must have dropped it in by council helicopter. Oh, and add councils to that must-blow-up list. You sure your name isn't Ted Arafat? Now, now, where was I? Where was I? Oh, that's right. John o opened his car door to check his suspension and suddenly, ding, ding, bang! What was that? A bloody bicycle courier! <laughs> suddenly there's a yobbo on a Morven star with his head stuck in the glove box. It's awful! No, it's not. He's a bicycle courier. Serves him right. <laughs> I reckon they own the world. Anyway, I would have been home sooner, but there were too many witnesses. They wouldn't let you leave. No, they all wanted to buy us a beer. <laughs> oh, it's memories of Doris Day sing along again. Don't get picky, Muriel, or I'll cancel the lot, and then what are you going to do for the rest of your pathetic lives? <laughs> Any other criticisms of today's fun packed activities program? <laughs> Who's meet special guest Heather Casey? Heather Casey is our local mayor. The local government elections are coming up, and being a power hungry real estate agent, she's visiting to grovel for your votes. Fancy that. She wants my vote. Yes, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> They'll take a vote from anybody. The aged, the sick, the homeless, the legless, the children of Israel. If Madge Burroughs' cat's bum had a vote, she'd kiss that too. <laughs> Samantha Muriel, I have a wonderful news. I'm going to be a star again. <laughs> oh, you got the treadmill ad. <laughs> no, darling, no more commercials. I only do them to keep my face in front of the public and to eat. Are you going to Westfield to demonstrate those frying pans again? <laughs> no, darling, never again. Oh, sometimes an actor's life is torture, but not anymore. I am returning to legitimate theatre with a live audience who love me. Like when you were Mrs. Crabby Teapot at Expo. <laughs> All right, Joan, for God's sake, tell us what's going on. Dear Ty and I are getting back together. Ty? Tyrone Wilde. Tyrone Wilde? He was a real star. He was also my husband and damned good in bed. <laughs> Not in that order. <laughs> You were married to Tyrone Wilde? How long? Oh, about... Uh... <laughs> I mean, ages, darling. It must have been three, four months. We were starring in Jealous Throbs the Heart in the West End. The marriage did wonders for the box office. And Ty, bless him, wants to revive it here. Tyrone Wilde is coming here. Isn't it exciting? Yes, we're all thrilled for you, Joan. Now you'll be able to pay off your bar bill. <laughs> Why does every loony in the world always knock on my door? Yes? Heather Casey. She doesn't live here. <laughs> there must be a loony convention on in town. <laughs> it's you again. Mr. Bullpit. Yeah, that's right. I live here. Now, I've never heard of your mate. I'll see you later. No, Mr. Bullpit. I am Heather Casey. May I come in? No. Thank you. You could be an undercover Amway agent. I am your local councillor and I'm up for re-election. I would like to talk to you about local issues. Oh, I haven't had any of those for ages. Well, as a ratepayer, is there anything bothering you? Yeah, you. <laughs> Pickle me, grandmother. Can't you see I'm trying to retire? 
Mr. Bullpit, I have had a tough day campaigning. My feet are aching, I've had 82 cups of tea, and I have just kissed a certain part of a cat. <laughs> now, may I have five minutes of your time? All right, but I haven't got any money. I don't want your money, I want your vote. Now, what can I do to persuade you? How about a bribe? What about things like preschool facilities? Hey, kids. <laughs> Mobile library services. Don't read. <laughs> Storage. I make my own. There must be something I can help you with. Have you got a beer in that bag? <laughs> no. Oh, well, forget a thing. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Speed humps. Aha. Uh -huh. Council has a state-of-the-art space-age speed hump department that can install one in two hours, and that includes a union regulation meal break. So what? In fact, we won fastest speed hump of the year at the local government awards. <laughs> Where would you like it? I hate speed humps. Hate, hate, vomit, chuck, spew. <laughs> Mr. Bullpit, you don't understand. Speed humps are vital if council is to maintain rigid control over the ratepayers. I'm going to vote for you unless you move those speed humps. Or a bloke can drive in peace like he used to be able to. Blackmail is a nasty word, Mr. Bullpit. However, it is one we use regularly in council. <laughs> so let me try for your vote in another way. Ah, so you have got a beer in there. <laughs> no. There is still a week before the elections and I'm determined to get your vote and I'm pretty sure I'll have it by tomorrow. How? Ah, that's a secret, Mr. Bullpit. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Goodbye. That's Jono. He's walking upright and his tail's dropped off. <laughs> Ted! You gotta help me. Oh, Spruce, Jono, what happened? You got any big band aids? Oh, I'll get them. Geez, you're bleeding. Uh, I'm coming home from Rotary. It's a beautiful evening. There's no traffic around, so I thought I'd gun the Falcon, do a bit of controlled power slide into Whispering Pines, and suddenly, bang, whack, I'm in the air. My head smashes the dome light. Plastic and blood all over the place. Oh. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Sometime between seven and nine tonight, the council dropped in a bloody great speed hump! <laughs> oh, pardon me, sir. Who? <laughs> you, sir. Sir? Oh, I've never been called a sir before. <laughs> it's always a, a, a number or a... Hey, shorty. Yes, be better than me. I'm Tyrone Wilde, and I've come. I've to... seen you. I have. I've seen you. Yes, most probably. One achieves a certain stardom. I'm everywhere these days. The screen, television. Got it. You were at the florist a half an hour ago. <laughs> yes. I was looking for Miss Collins. She is not in a villa, and they said she might be around the village somewhere. Oh well, uh, try in there. Oh, thank you. How about an autograph? Okay. Where do you want me to sign? <laughs> Forget it. In there? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Darling, I have returned. <laughs> Tyrone Wilde. Who else? <laughs> These are for you. Thank you. Really is you, Tyrone. Come to my arms. Oh, all right. <laughs> Why have we been apart for so long? I don't know. And look at you. You haven't changed much. Well, at all. <laughs> what has happened to you? Not a lot, really. I went on pick-a-box, but I didn't win any. <laughs> Darling, I'm confused. You're, you're not the Joan that I remember. Neither am I. I've always been Muriel. <laughs> I don't understand. Tyrone, darling. Joan? Joan Carlin. Oh, yes, it's me. Come to me, tiger. Oh, yes, it's you. They're mine. I got them for Joan. <laughs> darling, these are for you. How sweet. Come to my arm. Oh, darling.
darling. <laughs> why, why have we been apart for so long? Haven't we been silly? And look at you. You haven't changed at all. How old must you be now? Oh, you know, 40-ish. Oh. <laughs> yes. Same as me. Tell me all about our show. Everything under control. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to have a boffo hit. Mind you, there is a little problem with the backer. But then I started to think, why not raise the money and back it ourselves and take all the profit? What a wonderful idea. Why don't we go to my villa and discuss it over some champagne? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, do you still have that little, um, you know, my favourite, the, you know? Beside the bed, just for you. That's <laughs> my joke. <laughs> Hello? It's Ratepayer Bullpit here. <laughs> Can I speak to Councillor Casey? You know, the Sheila who kisses certain parts of cats. It's a nasty looking wound, Jono. It is. I should think it's actionable. <laughs> Listen, you, Bullpit here. Someone has put a speed hump outside our village. Stop laughing! No, I'm still not going to vote for you. You know you can stick your speed hump. Hello? <laughs> You're a woman, you can't say that. Hello? Hello? Gone. Just once I'd like to be able to have a phone call without somebody hanging up on me. You're wasting your time, Grumble Pop. What you need is direct action. What do you mean, blow up the phone? No! Demonstrate! React! Make a statement! Like when I streaked at the cricket. Oh, that, it doesn't count. It was women's cricket. <laughs> well, Ted. I think we're stuffed. From what I can see, they can put a speed hump in your dunny if they want. <laughs> well, what about my rights? You have no rights. You can't do anything about it. You reckon, do you? Stand by for cheering. The bullpit brain is on. <laughs>together after all these years. It's as if we've never been divorced. I'd quite forgotten your special climbing rose tattoo. Oh, yes. <laughs> My trademark, so to speak. It seems to have got bigger. <laughs> yes, well, it's, um, it's much warmer here than in England, and roses thrive in the heat. Yeah, they certainly do. But what about the production money? Ah, well, with your contribution, I'm sure I can raise the rest. Anyone who can raise a tattoo can raise anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, I forgot. The bridge tournament, it's the final. Please forgive me. No, you're not still playing bridge. Well, I have to do something to stop me from smoking. <laughs> Here are the keys. I'll see you later. <laughs> Joan Collins, five thousand dollars. Collins, 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 let me see. One asterisk. No, I think three asterisks. <laughs> and an exclamation mark. Excuse me. Ah. Sorry to disturb you. I'm Samantha McDonald, the village manager. Oh, good evening, Miss. Oh, uh... no, don't stand up, not for plain old me. Uh, in that case. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wiles. Please call me Tyrone. Tyrone, I hope you don't think I'm silly, but I've been a fan of yours for years. Oh, that's not silly, that's just good taste. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so overcome. You get me so flushed. Yes, one has that effect. <laughs> when I was at boarding school, the other girls had photos of John, Paul, George, but... I had a photo of you. I'm honoured. And now, here we are together, 
You're you. I'm not at school anymore. Or married. Where's Joan? She's playing bridge. I'm, uh, I'm on my own this evening. <sighs> Can I get you something? Coffee? Uh, no, thank you. But uh, a nightcap might be good. A brandy. I'll get you a brandy. Yes, 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 but not here. People are watching. It's the curse of fame. <laughs> Somewhere else? Well, there's my apartment, but you wouldn't want to. <laughs> I'd love to. When do you knock off? Now, shall we go? <laughs> Tell me, Samantha, have you ever thought of um, investing in a show? I don't know. Is it fun? Oh, great fun. Very profitable. <laughs> I'm deeply ashamed. My hero, my amigo. My grumble one Kenobi, the man who taught me the, the wisdom of the, of the urban wilderness, is a criminal. I'm not a criminal. <laughs> well, what's this charge sheet say? Edward Melba Bulpit, willful damage to council property, to wit one speed up. It wasn't my fault, I had hump rage. <laughs> Abuse of language and common assault, to wit knocking off a constable's hat and jumping off. <laughs> oh, that'll do it. The wind blew it off. And then another gust blew it under both my feet when I was already in the air. <laughs> I've got it, Ted! It's here in black and white! <laughs> It'll teach him to meddle with a man who presented a sausage sandwich to the Governor General. I've never done that. <laughs> I did. At the Rotary Sausage Sizzle for Sarajevo. <laughs> We've beaten the bastards. We'll laugh them out of court. <laughs> What's that caper, Sir John Oak? Well, as you know, most of Australia's laws are based on British common law. And speed humps, I would interpret, come under this. The Freedom of Passage Act of 1593, which was designed to stop outlaws dropping logs across the King's highways to hold up coaches. Well, it's never been repealed. So what? So, it also has not been repealed in Australia. And what is a speed hump? A pain in the bum. <laughs> no. A speed hump is nothing more, nothing less, than a modern concrete log. <laughs> I rest my case. That's just crazy enough to work. I'll represent you in court, Ted. <laughs> Come to think of it, I might also sue the council for damages to my head. And just remember, in case of fire, Hit the alarm, go to your assembly points, and Prozac will be available for all. <laughs> for those of you with pacemakers, turn them up to personal best. Got that? <laughs> Good. Carry on. Oh, it's you. Good morning, uh, Samantha. Did you sleep well last night? What was left of last night, oh. yes. It was a very satisfying night in bed. Oh, <laughs> oh by the way, here's my check for oh, the show. Oh, thank you, thank you. You won't regret it. It's a very wise investment. Will we be... Will you be... Will we be... Will you be... ringing me later? <laughs> as soon as I can. But look, let's keep this our little secret, shall we? I've got to go. Here's my number. You've given me six of these already. <laughs> Bye. Excuse me, Tyrone. Could I have your autograph? Yes, of course, Muriel. Look, I'm sorry about that little mix-up yesterday. Oh, that's all right. How's the show going? Oh, wonderfully. We're going to be a hit. Funny, I always wanted to be in show business, but somehow or other my vibrant personality wasn't snapped up by a talent scout. Mm. <laughs> Have you ever thought of investing in a show? I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity for a vibrant, smart person like yourself. Really? Yes, why don't we go somewhere quiet and um, talk about it? <laughs> Mr. Bullpit. Yes, Your Majesty. Close enough. Anyway, having studied the relevant precedents and statutes, it would seem against all logic and common sense you're absolutely correct. Curiously, your chubby little counsel, Mr... Mr... Johnston, Your Honour. Mr Johnston has created a bit of legal history. Therefore, I find in favour of Mr Bullpit and order the council to either remove all speed humps or, failing that, get some legislation in place legalising the damn things. <laughs> Next. Oh, God, it's you again, Mr Bullpit.
ball pit. It seems you're charged with creating a public mischief with a bicycle courier. For seeing as though it was my birthday, and I too hate bicycle couriers, case dismissed. <laughs> trying to work out the courage to tell you. It's just two crazy people thrown together by fate. He's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? I, I woke up this morning and there he was, gone. He, <laughs> he left a note pinned to my massage pillow. <laughs> gone? But we were going to sail his schooner to Tahiti. <laughs> He's gone back to London with my money. My God! He's got my money too! Bastard! 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 And mine. What? My secret TAB account money. He charmed it out of me. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. He's used me and all my friends and robbed my public of me. I'll pay back the money, I promise. No, Joan, that won't be necessary. Yes, it is! No, <laughs> just after he charmed me, I thought, Muriel, I thought, what you need is some insurance. And? I grabbed this. His passport! <laughs> He's not going anywhere. How did you get it? I found it in his pocket just after he showed me how well he can grow roses. <laughs> what? what?